Greetings, Atlings. Welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life. Today we have Project Beast back with a flu. And it started with some instrument cluster warnings that say only normal ride height is available, meaning the air suspension is not working as it should. We did a DTC scan and came up with a Charlie 1 Alpha 20-64 DTC, which means the tank is filling too slow. So according to the RLM, which is responsible for your air suspension, that guy uh, reports that uh, it's filling up a little too slowly. So that could be one of several faults. And one of them is usually either a choked compressor element or a crack somewhere in the air system. So we have uh, gone round and done our due diligence. We took the compressor off the vehicle and allow me to mention that before you do that, you need to take some prerequisite actions, including but not limited to disabling the air suspension. So you go into the engine bay, remove the R7 relay, which is responsible for the compressor. Looks something like this. It's a pretty big relay, so you'll know when you're getting it right. Try to pry it carefully because I can see someone already tried to do it and damaged it slightly. Anyway, uh, remove that R7 relay. Wait 120 seconds or two minutes to disconnect the battery. Then uh, place axle stands under the vehicle. Do all the usual safety procedures. And then you can get to removing this guy. Now, it sits in front of the rear left wheel and it sits like this as you see wait no, no, no. yeah like wait am i right am i right am i right yes it sits this way yeah thank you uk for all the rust and corrosion it's held in place by three 10 mil bolts and uh, because of all the corrosion we snapped one of them uh, plastic cover comes off which is held by this and luckily it snapped but yeah, we'll get to take care of that later. So, uh, this is basically how the compressor assembly looks like. Uh, it has two airlines, the front face and two at the back. They are push clip type airlines. So, uh, of course, when the pipe is in place, you push these little guys to release the pipes. Uh, with some struggle, you usually get them out, and especially on these ex-UK vehicles that have a lot of corrosion all over the place. So, um, the problem is usually with this cap or cover, and we want to inspect whether it's cracked on the inside. Typically, you can usually see, I don't know if this will zoom in correctly, but in between the airline ports, there's a line that looks like a crack right there that is our culprit but until we take it apart we can't know for sure so why don't we get to it and see whether we can make any progress with uh, discovering what could be the issue in order to take the cap off you have to undo six t30 torques which looks something like this and uh, I'm just being lazy so I'll use an impact gun but if you must be careful with the torque rating so you don't snap them they are high very coarse thread uh, torques and um, they come up pretty easy remember there is a spring loaded it's a spring loaded cap so you must remember to hold it down as you remove the as you remove the the screws holding it down find out shall we what lies beneath all right the cap is off and like I mentioned it's spring-loaded so it sits this way on the dryer like that and it's also rubber o-ringed and as is typical with the uh, compressed air systems there was some moisture in there that's perfectly normal and we can confirm that that crack goes all the way to the inside of the cap, as is visible there. So there's that line. You can see there, that's one side of the crack. And 
this side is also evident. I'm not sure if this would be enough to cause the sort of leak that the vehicle dynamics is complaining about. But hey, I'm no engineer, so I do not know. All right, so over on this other side is the dryer. And there should be some drying agents in here. I'm guessing balls of some sort. Let's see if I'm right. And don't try this at home. This is the lazy way of taking this apart. So, uh, just help it with a little nudge and pry. Oh, it's already loose actually. There we go. So this is the element that is responsible for keeping these guys away from your airlines. And they should also be rubber o-ringed. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, I am. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's out. That there is your filtration disc with a rubber o-ring in between. All right, so it's done. Uh, then there is another before we get to the balls. Can you see that? Those look like silica gel balls, if I'm not wrong. So we shall empty those carefully. Again, safety reminder, always wear protection when you're dealing with these sorts of things because you don't really know where they've been. Okay, let's empty this out, shall we? Oh, look at that! We are caking! <laughs> we are caking. So, looks like there's more moisture here than we thought. Let's just see what we can do here. This might actually be our problem. This might actually be our problem and I'll be very happy if that's the case. Okay, didn't quite get all of it out. But it appears we have found our culprit. So let's see, let's see. Let's see if we can get all of them out. All right, so that's how they look. And that's a huge mound of drying agent, all kicked up. I think this is the reason why the ride level could not get enough pressure built in there. So, what we shall do is to first inspect the rest of the unit, check the plumbing, and check these discs, see whether everything is okay. And then, depending on what we find, we will be able to know if we are buying an additional unit or if we can get away with this. Repair, replace the drying agent, get some fresh beads in there, and then call it a day. Okay, so I may not be able to do this on video, but let's crack it open and see what we got. Okay, so I think we may just have a quick and simple solution to this because both element discs seem to be completely choked. So there's one at the top of course, and then there's the other one at the bottom. They feel like they are completely soaked. And uh, behind this, those uh, impressions you see are left over by this metal disc that prevents the beads from falling through and back on the dryer we now have uh, our port down there that you can see which goes to the pump so we shall clean all this out nice and tidy and we may just have the beast ready to go in a short while because from my visual inspection which is very 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 quick and hasty I don't think there is a major issue with these components but 
we of course have to check everything. So the pump assembly, we'll take that apart. We'll look in there, take a peek, dust it off, check the motor, check the assembly that drives the piston, uh, check the temp probes and everything else, the airline connectors, those guys. I think we should be grand. Yeah, but I'm really happy. I'm really happy that uh, I think we may have our culprit. Because looking at this, it should be quick and easy. All right, uh, daylight is out. I think we'll call it a day. And uh, remember, safety first. So eyewear, gloves, protection, full nine yards. So interesting discovery was that after disassembling all the desiccant from the air dryer, there was some damage to some of the silica gel balls, but I think we should be able to salvage some of this. Now we'll do quality controls on them and see whether they are worth reusing, but if not we'll just get a fresh set because this stuff should be cheap and it's readily available most places. The blue hue is actually after them being uh, dehydrated so that's why you see the pyrex glass they were put in the oven for uh, uh, about 90 minutes and another even more interesting discovery was these guys these are makeup cleanup pads the ladies in the house may know what i'm talking about it's the stuff used to clean makeup off your face and they just so happen to be the exact same size of the dryer elements so guess what we will be cheap and cheerful service crew who reuse stuff that is not designed <laughs> for what they're meant to be um, I'm going to check the flow rates and just see that we can use them safely and whether they disintegrate upon getting wet and stuff like that but yeah that was a pretty nifty save so let's get on with the reassembly, cleaning, inspection, testing, and then just see whether we can plant this guy back and uh, take it from there. This is what the vehicle side looks like with the airlines having been taped over to protect them uh, from dust and creepy crawlies that may walk in there. We shall also inspect the junctions and any connectors that may need attention. The electrical connectors for now have been socked just to also keep them uh, away from contaminants. Uh, quite some corrosion here. We'll try and clean and grease those to protect the bolts from, from uh, seizure in the future. So yeah, once the pump is done, we'll bring it back, install, test. Uh, I think we shall also want to check the compressor tank. Uh, pretty rusty, but I think it's it's in fair health and uh, Once done, we'll call it a day All right, all said and done, the compressor has been reassembled and we have put our service tag markings on it so that service crew other than ourselves can know that there was work done here. Um, the dryer has been reassembled, I've put in some prongs to allow us to get power to the ports without having to disassemble it. So let's just try and see whether the pump runs. And we shall test for pressure once it's on the vehicle. Voila! Yeah, seems to be building up good pressure. So, looks like we have a winner. All right, now it's time to clean it up, put it back on the vehicle, then uh, test our air ride. Okay, it's been a long day, but I think that 
we made quite some progress. Uh, so now I've just uh, tapped into the ride level module. I would like to monitor some specs with regards to uh, ride height sensors, uh, motor temp, pressures and everything related to uh, compression. Uh, I do believe that the problem is resolved but until we run an actual test it might be a bit difficult to know. So right now we are on off-road height. I will drop the vehicle to access height. Uh, ah, of course uh, as is requirement you must close the doors for the ride height to be altered. Uh, so we'll drop I shall time the vehicle, basically how long it takes to elevate and I can hear the compressor running already which is a good sign. I also have that data here on my display. So the pump is on, the height sensors will calibrate, I can see my temperature rising meaning the compressor is getting slightly toasty. So let's hit the switch and time it, we are now going up. And we are boiling our compressor a little bit. Uh, pressure is up slightly. Motor temperature is also going up. Um, seems to be working. Took about seven seconds, which is good. Which is good. So we'll go for some real life testing and just try to figure out what else is ailing. Uh, fix the brakes tomorrow, reset everything and call it a day. Release the beast back into the wild. Thank you for keeping me company. Thank you for always watching. We appreciate. Until the next time, peace.